I'm here with Brenda Schwader, and Brenda, I love this bracelet that you made. This is so pretty. Thanks, Katie. It was really fun to do. So many different techniques, too. You have the jig, you have ribboning, you have leather, you have it all. Right, and we have a lot of explaining to do today. All right. <laughs> I'm here for you. Let's go. <laughs> all right. The well, first thing we want to do is, um, you can see that we have a lot of parts to this. And I wanted, I loved all of these different leathers together. It's just so, so I had to use them all in the same bracelet. And so what I did was I created this template here and I kind of just tried to do a little paper pattern around my wrist and, um, and kind of like to figure out where I wanted everything. Plus we needed a little bit of a seam allowance to, um, to go back, if I can turn this upside down, and um, actually hold the buckle on, right? So we had some engineering to think about too. A, so, lot of, a little bit of planning before you get started, but we'll have all the instructions online, so be sure you can go and get those. Exactly, and it'll be, it'll be great fun. Um, so the first thing I did is I knew that my buckle was going to be about an inch in, in, inner diameter. So I created, I wanted to make it about an inch, and we just have these great tools available to us now where we take and uh, just use this. Instead of a scissors, boom, we've got our little strip of, of leather especially if we cut it all the way through. There you go. Whoops, there we go. And then it's ready to fly. So what I've done is I've pre-cut all of my different, um, different links right there, Katie. The next thing we'll wanna do is make sure that our, um, our rivets are in place. You can see that basically what we do is we're overlapping. And we can overlap this different, different ways, but what I've sort of done is, is as, as thought of as almost like a roof shingle where I'm overlapping the same okay. direction. Mm -hmm. But we're do, what we are doing is a, it's about a quarter of an inch and that will um, accept our bangle in there as, as in, in cover of that, that dimension. Okay, so I also use this as, as my way of making sure I've got my, my little holes cut right in there and then um, this particular thing, it's okay, because what we, we are going to do is actually cut that little piece, or this, um, this mark out with a leather punch so we can use a permanent marker. Next, this is a real tool-heavy project. Sure is. We've got this, but, but when we're riveting these, what we need to remember is that this rivet tool, this applicator here, um, is, does not cut. It's just a press. So you need to So we do before. need, yeah, to make those pilot holes. I remember the last time that you, I was here and made this bracelet here with you. Yes, you had I mentioned have. that too, the pilot holes, right? Back then we used a fire, uh, um, a fly press, oh, to right. um, to do it. But now um, we have this great tool here that's a handheld model, and I've got it actually put into a vise. So. Um, so again, we have hands-free work. We can use our hands to, to work. So I thought what I would do is just, we don't have to spend a whole lot of time doing all these rivets, but we wanna see how one segment is connected to the other. I've been doing a lot of leather stuff too, and making these pilot holes, there are so many different ways you can do it. Sometimes I punch through my template, mm -hmm. but then by the time you've done that several times, you are increasing the size of that hole. Your template, So then right. it's not quite right. Right. So. That's a I good guess, point. you know, the best way is to just mark it and... It's a little putzier, but you get a better, and especially because right. you do want to line things up uh, really well, okay? What I forgot to mention, too, is just as a finishing touch, what I do to each of these is that I take and just use a little cuticle scissors and just round these corners ever so slightly, and then that way it just doesn't look like, you know, you have all these squares done together. And also, before we, we put things together, so we can get at all the edges, we've got this great edging paint, and I got happened to get this one color, um, this one particular uh, shade in aluminum, and what that enables me to do is to um, match my hardware. Oh, nice. So I just take a Q-tip, or maybe even a spongy um, eye applicator, and then just really very, very quickly go around all the edges. Does it dry pretty quickly so that you can work with it then? It does, it does. And I'm just gonna watch, like here I've gone over the edge a little bit and just kind of brush that away oh, nice. with your finger. It does make it look really finished. It's amazing what the edging it paint is. can do, I love it. You know, a You're lot a of- You're a details person. I am. <laughs> I didn't think so. Um, but anyway, so so then that's, that's all ready to go. Um, and so when we find the other piece that I put down, what we're gonna do is take 
And I've used these great crystal rivets. These are the pearl rivets. They're so pretty. Right. And this certain dimension of this hole that works just right, and that'll be on our website too. So I wanted to put that through, so I know that that's exactly where I have it. Then I put this bottom piece of... On the back. Um, oh, yeah. okay. And I put it business side up. Okay. okay. And then we've got this great little flange right here, and then I'm going to fit that right in here. On the fly press, we had a pneumatic um, right. part of it. This one is more mechanical. It's a little bit more mechanical. Also, we don't have to plug it in, so that's, that's okay. Now, don't be nervous. I'm going to bring this down, and it's going to fit in there. And you're not going to hear or feel any kind of pressure or anything like that, but we just need to give it a little bit of a tug. And there's a crystal in there, so you, you can overpress. So be gentle. Yes. Nice. Look at oh, that. Isn't Perfect. That great? Yes. And so we can really use that. It, it's probably the most time to do all right. of that, but you can see how quickly that went. Yes, and it looks so good when it's, it looks very professional. Thank you. Yeah. So we do have to make some a buckle. Yes. Great. So we've got this great jig here, and um, what I've done is you can see that I've used this one-inch square peg. But just to beef it up and give it a little bit more interest, we've created this coil. And these are the micro pegs here. And then this is the 1 16th micro peg. And I'm just using 20 gauge wire. I like to work in steel, because that's just my it's kind of thing. thing yeah. It's my thing. And um, I'm just going to kind of wind it up and around there. I can use my lifter tool to actually kind of compress that down. And then this fits exactly over 16 uh, gauge wire. Um, um, so it just adds a decorative element. So you want to do that first before you make your square. Right, right. Um, then what we could do, and you can always also put this on afterward if you want, but um, what I've done here is I'm going to create the buckle. So again, I'm going to use my swivel lock, and this is a little locking cam. I'm going to finger tighten it and then give it that extra little tightening here. A 14 it's so important gauge when is you're working force. with that heavy wire, yeah. It is, it is. And this is what's gonna enable us to, uh, to work this. Now when I'm working on a, um, a jig form, a peg with corners, what I like to do is I'll actually, actually jerk it around there. Somehow it makes me feel better. I feel like if I have a running start <laughs> yeah. to it, right. that this will work a little bit better. And I do get crisper edges, so there's got to be something to yeah. that. Got some <laughs> it's not just a, men there. a mental thing, right? Okay. So what we want to do too is, it's really not made for this, but I, I can just lightly tap against this, and that's going to crispen my edges as oh, well. Oh, nice. Okay. What I want to do is, every time I'm making something that is a link or something, right in the, in the back here, you've got actually um, an opening. And so when I come, I know that when I come up and off of this, um, I'm going to lose that connection, oh, right. connection point. So right now I'm going to take it up and off. I'm going to unscrew my swivel up, swing it to the side, and then I've got this part. Okay, and I don't have a cutter. Here it is. <laughs> and I just used a chalk pencil because I'm working with dark wire. Makes it easy to see. Right, and by the way, I did clean the wire first before with steel I worked wool. with it with steel wool, right? That way, it's, I don't always do that, but in certain cases, I like to. So we've got our nice form right there, and we're going to make the tongue piece and the connector piece too. Okay. The tongue piece um, is made, they're both made with um, 16 gauge wire. And thank you very much. <laughs> Actually, this is the 16 gauge wire here, thank you. And um, right, we're going to again use our swivel lock and this one I had it set up. You could move yours if you want, but I want it to be quick here. So we have two. And remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey, right? Yes. <laughs> and then this way, I do. It seems like, well, why couldn't you just do that? But again, I like using and having this. It's amazing what you can get a little bit better shape. A lot of force, too. Yeah, because you have both of your hands here. Right. Again, we're going to uh, mark that center point right down there. 
and loosen everything up. And you can see, Katie, that if I wanted to make, say if I were in production and I was selling these at a gift shop or whatever, and this was my best best seller, that I would really- You could make a ton of these, yeah. Right, and they would be consistent and nice and not so um, hard to think about. Okay. So I'm gonna get back in there with my cutters. So this is for the, I don't know what you call this oh, part of the buckle. Oh, that's okay. Never do that. I have my safety glasses on. <laughs> yes, so. you do. It's okay. And I don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should have them on. Um, yes. So, and here's this. I don't know the names of the buckle anatomy, but, but this is that the part that, that catches. over the top. Okay. Right, and that was yeah. where we don't have a little right. uh, loosey-goosey in the wind there. And then I'm actually using um, the 16 gauge on this part too, okay? And this is for the tongue that fits over the top? This is for the tongue, and believe it or not, you know, when I wrote steel wire jewelry, I did a bigger buckle with like 10 gauge wire. And um, I thought, to do a buckle, that would be really sort of, but if you take a look at it, all it is is wire bending. I'm remembering my righty tighty. There you go. I have to stop to, to do that. <laughs> all right, here we go. And so all I'm doing, and just to get that kind of nice curve in there, I'm just gonna use my finger and push that down in there a little bit. Oh, okay. And make that nice part that goes over the... Um, over the part of oh, the And just make spiral. it look a little bit happier that way. Now, here I've got a little piece of wire, which is one of my things that I'm most tragically... Uh, worried about, but I've got enough to just take this and twist it around and make the part that's going to go around the um, around that that part right there. The catch or mm -hmm. whatever you want to right. call that part. I wish I did know my my <laughs> buckle anatomy. I'm going to look it up, right Katie. This. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get this out of my way. Okay, and I'm gonna move it around so I can get to it a little bit better and actually form this. If I had a little bit bigger piece, there you go. I could go all the way around, but we're gonna cheat a little bit. Okay. So this is the part that will fit over inside the leather. Mm-hmm. It's going to fit right on the back there. Okay. Okay. Now to finish this, what we've got here is that we can just clip it up here a little bit and forge the end. We're almost out of time, but I want to make sure that we see how to put this all together. Okay. Great. So what we'll do here is we would normally forge this, and we're going to open this up. You can get an idea real quickly here. And we would have hammered this. Okay. And then when we put this together, we open this up, and then this part goes on first. We're going to feed this through our, our through the leather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this will already have that coil on it. We have made that coil. Yep. And then we're going to have our seam allowance and then basically do that part last. This is so great. What a great idea. And thank you so much for all of these different tips and techniques that you shared with us. Thanks for having me.